Well, grace, peace, and love to you from God our Father and from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Holy and awesome God, it is indeed a joy to come and worship you. You are our Heavenly Father. You are our Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. You've done so much. You have sent Jesus to die and rise that we would have life. And so we come to hear your word, O God, that we may be built up through that. May you bless the words that I speak here this morning. May they not serve to glorify me, but to bring you glory, O God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Well, the truth is often a hard pill to swallow. If you have ever been caught in the lie, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you have spun a story to hide a truth you did not want anyone to know. Maybe it was a dark secret in your past. Maybe it was a wrong you committed that, of which you were ashamed. <clears throat> Whatever the case, the truth was hidden. But when it comes out, confronts you, and bites you in the nose, it hurts. And so you hide the truth because the truth shines a light on your sins. For some, they don't want that sin exposed. Some want their positions of power and influence protected and maintained. Some want what they want in order to maintain their own personal control and to protect their own personal gods. Some feel they have the right to be their own god and to maintain and develop and and promote their own truth. I have the right to do this. I have the right to love whom I want to love. I have this right. It's me. No matter what the word of God says. The Pharisees challenging Jesus wanted their control and did not want to submit and thus relinquish their positions of power. But whether you like it or not, God, Jesus, is who they say they are. I am who I am, period. That truth cannot and will not be hidden. But it does not stop people from trying. And so, the scripture we go. Verse 38, the Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you're a Samaritan and have a demon? Well, the smear campaign begins. This is nothing more than a personal attack on Jesus. The Jews don't like what the Samaritans and Jesus are saying, challenging their, the Jews' exclusive claim to be children of Abraham. They don't like this. Despite the fact what has been spoken in the word of God, you know, John the Baptist makes reference to this, you know, you know, do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children of Abraham. It's not about you. God does this. The Apostle Paul picks up on this theme. Romans 2, For no one is a Jew who is, who is merely one outwardly, nor is circumcision outward and physical, but a Jew is one inwardly. Circumcision is a matter of the heart. It's not about what you do and that kind of stuff. It's what God does. So the Jews are not liking this truth. They don't like this at all. And so... What they do, they they attack Jesus' credibility. If he he has a demon, well, we're not going to listen to this guy. Demons are bad. So let's make Jesus to be out a demon. Make him out to be a demon. Make him out to be some Samaritan, some half-breed, some lower-than-dirt level of people, that kind of stuff. let's, Let's try to do it. It's the very thing politicians do, isn't it, really? the mudslinging, that kind of stuff. If you can't refute them, if you can't argue with them, let's attack their character. Let's attack their credibility. To make what they're saying, you know, be questionable. We see this all the time, right? We got a presidential campaign coming up. We're going to see it a lot more. And I I get tired of this thing. And and so we see, but not just in, in politics, but other moral issues, going after this. You know, I'll bring it up again. You know, we've been dealing with the abortion stuff and I've been following this on social media and it's incredible 
how the, like pro-life groups are being attacked. You know, I just saw this thing here. It just, it made me go, what in the world are you talking about? This one politician said, oh, these pro-life men, they're just sex-starved. What does that mean? <laughs> Why are you, they're going after these guys because they stand for a moral thing, but they can't debate that truth. They can't, they can't refute it. So let's go after their character. Let's go after other things here. They try to do this. And so they're going after Jesus here. They, they want him to bite. They want him to come to them and to their level, but he doesn't. He doesn't do that. Verse 49, Jesus answered, I don't have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Verse 51, truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. So, notice what Jesus does, how he responds. Uh, No demon here. I don't have that. I honor my father, okay? I'm just doing what I'm told. You know, Philippians 2, he was obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. He's pointing to God, okay? Everything is about God. I I don't, I'm not, you know, trying to see glory here, okay? He goes, you dishonor me, and thus you dishonor God. I'm, he's not attacking their character. This is just what they are doing. So he does not sink to their level. It's not about me, he goes. It's about God's glory. So everything is pointing to God. Jesus stays in there. And then he preaches the gospel, basically. You keep my word, you won't die. It's very gracious here. They're they're coming after them with everything that they have. He doesn't fire back. Like, you know, you're demonic. Well, I know you are, but what am I? No, he doesn't get into the playground kind of response, right? He doesn't do that. He doesn't get roped into the mudslinging like many do. Jesus takes the high ground by giving glory to God and preaching the gospel. This approach is missing in many debates between Christians and the world today. Too many Christians don't take that high road but they join the world in taking the low road. In that case, they look just like the world and thus lose all credibility. It also steals glory from God because if that's where you're going against the world, it's about you. It's about you. It's not about God. You're taking that, by taking that low road, you're, taking your, you're going for your own glory here. And so the Jews continue in verse 52. They said, Now we know you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died and the prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? So they hold their ground. They get more defensive. Continuing on with this whole demon attack. Let's just drive this point home and see if we can get him to trip up or whatever. Attacking the gospel, attacking the truth. Trying to bait Jesus into glorifying himself. Who do you make yourself out to be? Tell us. You see see the bait? You see what they're trying to do here? They're trying to get Jesus to enter their arena, the low road in which they hold court. Come, Come down to us. Okay, come into our arena. As a Christian, you must never enter that arena. You need to stay out. I've made that mistake. Got eaten alive. I mean, some of you know about my little back and forth with an atheist on social media. I thought I knew what I was doing. I'll debate him. Sure. I can do this. I I know I've been a pastor for a while. I I can do this. Ah, it didn't work. He... I didn't convert him, not that I know of. But basically, I entered his arena, and that's what I did. And took the low road and lost. In the Old Testament, what happened when Israel tried to go out on their own? Oh, well, they're coming after us. I think, we got this. Didn't work too well for them. But when they went to God and said, God, our enemies are coming after us. Shall we engage him? Shall we go? 
What does God say? Yes, I will give them into your hand. I will give them. It's not, yeah, go after them, you'll win. No, I will give them into your hand. It's God. It's about God's glory, not their glory. It's why Gideon only had 300 men against tens of thousands. It's about God's glory, staying in that arena. You need to take the high road where God holds court, maintaining the home court advantage. That's where we need to be. That's where we need to be. And that's where Jesus stays. Verse 54, Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If you were to say, if I were to say I don't know him, I'd be a liar like you. But I do know him and I keep his word. In short, I am nothing. I don't make myself out to be anything. To God be the glory. Amen? Amen. The very God you claim to know, he says. That God that you're saying that you know, that's who I'm obeying. That's who I'm following. That's the high road. He, he's pointing everything to God. Jesus' ministry is simply one of obedience. Philippians 2 again, obedience. He's, do, he's following God's command. He's following God's plan. It's not about him becoming famous. Sure, Jesus could have done that and set up camp and had the biggest mega church in the world, but he doesn't do that. It's about God. When you truly know God, your life is naturally one of obedience. When you see God, when you know God, yes, I want to honor God. It's not about me. When you take a look at the stars, as Lori was talking about, it's like, I'm just a little speck in the grand scheme of things. It's about God. That's an amazing God. Psalm 8, incredible. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how majestic is your name. And that's who Jesus is pointing to. That's, you guys, it's not about me. It's, it's him. When you're in his court, the high road, you'll want to glorify him. You'll want to do it through obedience. So verse 56, Jesus says, Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. You notice what Jesus said here? Your father Abraham. Now Jesus is going after the one they truly make out to be their God, Abraham. Your father, Abraham. He didn't say, our father, Abraham, my father, Abraham. Your father, Abraham. He's going after their God. The Jews are so wrapped up in the fact that they are the children of Abraham and thus are safe and secure. I've been baptized. I can't be touched. I'm saved. No mention about faith at all. They are so wrapped up in this. They worship They don't worship God, they worship Abraham for crying out loud. And thus when Jesus and the Samaritans dispute their exclusive claim to be children of Abraham, the Jews get a little feisty. They don't like that. You're challenging our truth here. This is where the battle gets intense because when you go after someone else's God, you're grabbing the bull by the horns and if you're going to do that, you had better be ready. And you better not be doing that on their court, you better be doing that in God's court. Because you will get trampled. When you attack someone else's God, you won't come out unscathed, but you won't be destroyed. For God has already won through Jesus Christ. You're you're good to go in his court. And so verse 57, the Jews said to Jesus, you're not yet 50 years old. You've seen Abraham? And Jesus says, truly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And he picked up stones to throw at him. I love the feistiness of Jesus there. I'm God for crying out loud. But you know, he, he, he goes, guess what guys, Abraham is just a man. Okay, he died. Okay, I am. I am. Jesus went after their God. They went after him with stones. The world does the same thing. 
The world can't handle the truth. The world does not want to handle the truth because it will expose them. And so you have to discredit the truth that Christians proclaim. You see, the world does not want a divine Jesus. They don't want a Jesus who says, I am God. They want a Jesus who's a good moral teacher so they can interpret what he says in their way and twist it to how they want it. They don't want Jesus saying, I am. <clears throat> they don't want Jesus being God and Holy Spirit, all this kind of stuff. And so they do whatever they can to keep Jesus out of the divine realm. Case in point, some of you have heard me talk about this theologian. I'll just not mention names or anything like that. She was quoted in this article saying this, many of Paul's writings are nothing more than his snotty opinion. This is a pastor in a major denomination, rock star, and she's saying this, and people are going, well, I guess not everything Paul says is really God's word. It's just, well, I think this. Well, guess what? If you can do that and get people to think that, well, then this stuff about homosexuality or this stuff about whatever, you know, oh, that's not really what he meant. That's not really God's word. He's a, she's attacking the credibility of God's word. Attacking the per, personal attack on the authority of Scripture. It's why we exist as LCMC, because we hold true to the authority of Scripture. If you discredit Scripture, then you can make it mean whatever you want. The Jews didn't like the truth that Jesus was preaching. The world doesn't like the truth that's being proclaimed. And thus, when the truth of the gospel is proclaimed, the world gets defensive and begins their attacks. You must be careful. You've got to take the high road, giving glory to God, obeying him, being in his court, where he's in control, where he holds that home court advantage. If in this battle you seek your own glory, you will be crushed and trampled by the bull. It didn't work for Israel. It won't work for you either. The world can't handle the truth. It doesn't want the truth, but the world needs the truth. That's, we can't back down. Jesus didn't back down. Hey, before Abraham was, I am. He didn't have to say that. Got him in trouble a little bit, but... Hey, I'm here for the truth. Taking that high road, holding scripture high. Consider yourself nothing. And if you need a reminder, look at the stars. You're nothing in the grand scheme of things. Give glory to God. Preach the gospel. This is why we need to continue in scripture to get to know God better and better. The better you know the truth of who God is, the more you're going to obey The truth is this, Jesus is God, Son of God, Holy Spirit, died for our sins. He has defeated the gods of this world. Though you are attacked by this world, you have won the victory through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus is who he says he is. He is the I am, the bread of life, I am the light of the world, I am the good shepherd. Jesus is victorious because he is God and he is for you. The battle is not yours. It belongs to God through Jesus Christ the Lord. He has won the victory. The truth is the truth. It cannot be diminished by anyone. Only life through Jesus is worth standing for. No other God is worth it. Take the high road. Give glory to God. Always. God, our Father, God, our Creator, God, our life. He holds court, and He will hold court forever and ever. Amen? Amen. Amen.